Hello, today is the uh, 4th of September, and again I'm going to do a tutorial among spreadsheets, and I'm going to calculate volatility within the gold market. What I have here on this text document is gold prices going back to the start of 1968 from the LBMA. They do two different levels a day. They have an open, they have a morning and a, and a PM close basically. So it took a while, well basically not too long, but April 1st of 68 is where they decided to to have two mo movements. Now notice beforehand the price stayed at $35.20 for many straight days in fact it uh, from January the 16th 1968 to March the 29th 1968 the price traded in a two cent range and then on the 1st of April it went from $35.20 up to $38. That's a gain of 270 or about uh, 6% or so. So that's when things really got active. Now, what I want to do with this is I want to reduce the periods. There is a lot of periods in here because this is a daily situation. As of the last Friday, we're already pretty much around the 11,000 mark. 11,048 days. I don't want to work with those large numbers. I do have a program, however, where if I simply put in data on this column, what it will do is it will automatically do a 25 period candlestick open high low close. And I can do up to 22,000 cells within this. But I got two columns, so how am I going to get around this? I, I'm sure I could just use column B, but I may miss out on some high and low prices. I'm going to miss out anyway, because they're only doing a total of uh, two periods a day. So what we'll do is we'll take the sum, or the average, excuse me, the average of the last three periods. And we'll just copy a couple... We're going to be copy and pasting all the way up, but for now I'm just going to do that. So now we have the average. Now what I wanted to ask the computer is if the average is higher than it was the previous time, then I want the highest price. And if it's lower, then I want the lowest price. This makes it almost impossible to not to makes it almost impossible to not have the highest price and not have the lowest price within the spreadsheet. So if I put it equals if this number is greater than this number that I know it's in an uptrend. So I'm going to do the maximum of this in here, whatever the highest number happens to be. If it's not greater, that means it's in a downtrend, and I'm going to take the minimum of these two numbers. So it's in an uptrend, it should bring 1875, 25, and it does. I can copy and paste this up, and there we go. Now, I'll just bring this up and uh, type in here and then we'll paste it along there we go so these are the numbers that I need I need these numbers to uh, put in the other spreadsheet so let's highlight everything that we need And yes, the paste special can work as well, but I'm more apt to do the notepad and then just copy and paste it like this. And there we go. And I can use the same thing, go over to the other candle or the other spreadsheet and simply just paste the prices in here. And there we go. This is the gold chart or the gold price in here I'll just find where the lowest point happens to be and that would be right in here now it doesn't have the closing price on there but I can put that in manually
And the closing price happens to be, let's just see what it is. 1875.25. So I'll just write in here 1875.25 and we'll be ready to go. So now we'll paste this information in again. And now let's figure out volatility. I'm going to go through two different measures of volatility. One of which is your the highest point, subtract the lowest point, and divide it by the lowest point. Now give us a percentage move over a 25 period session. And we can copy and paste this all the way up to the top. And there we go. Now I can uh, use a front weighted average and show that the, the same way that I do within the silver market. And this is the uh, quarter day silver chart. And this is where the volatility comes from. And then these are the front weighted averages. So I guess it would be best for me if I'm going to copy and paste to put the volatility in column H. And there we go. So the volatility is now in column H. Now column A, I have a front weighted average. Instead of retyping the whole thing over again, I'm just going to copy and paste. And the formula is, it takes this number start 20. It basically means that the last period is worth one more than each previous one. So therefore, I'll take this formula, move it into the gold one, and just stick it here. And that did not work because it says H548 times 20. That's why it didn't work. So what I got to do to fix that is go to H442 on the previous spreadsheet and make the copy. So I push the copy button and now this should work. There we go. So this gives us a 20 period average of this in here. We'll now go to the previous one, 430, 442 is it? Yes. And we'll copy this one as well. This is the 80 period moving average. That's a lot to type, but once you do it once, I don't have to do it again, I guess. I don't know. And what we'll do is we'll copy and paste this up to, uh, we'll do 120 because there's a 120 moving average. And there we go. Now we can make the chart and we'll make a line chart for this. This will be one of two different forms of volatility that I'll be doing. We'll change the scaling of it. I like to do eight by four and a half just because that's a widescreen variety. And then we'll just uh, move this along. And there's the gold volatility right then and there. And that's an interesting little pattern, actually. It had this downtrend, and uh, it really stopped right in here, roughly around cell 169. So we'll take a look at the data, see where that bottom happens to be, roughly at around 2.5%. But we see currently now that we are within an uptrend. So 169 would be... And it would be one, and because I didn't do the first 120, be uh, two, 160 plus 120 be about 280. So here's those little percentages in here. 
which means that the bottom really occurred roughly this doesn't when the price was I don't know the dates on here that uh, is a little mistake on my part but this was obviously before the market bottom so in the 1990s now let's do a second form of volatility what we'll do with this is we'll do an X period maximum and an X period minimum. I will say we'll do 10 periods. So what I want to do is I want to do the max of 10 periods. I want to do the minimum now of 10 periods. So we have the maximum of 10 and we got the minimum which we'll do now. And now what we do here is we take this number let me just, and we subtract this number to get a difference. So high minus low divided by the low. This is the really the 250 day high and 250 day low because each one represents 25 periods. And we'll do this up to say cell 11 because we need the average of 10. And there we have it. So this number here is going to give us volatility. And we'll go even further back because we're going to start roughly around 1969. And this is an interesting chart right now because what we'll be seeing is a major breakout pattern developing. I've seen this once before. And Alrighty, there's the volatility. This was the big peak back in uh, 1979, 1980, and then boom, down she goes. And what we see here now, let me just uh, take away the uh, first few periods to make it look a little bit better. Is that we see this downtrend line here? It's like a wedge pattern. We have an obvious uptrend line within here and a downtrend line. And the wedge is now at the top part of this level, pretty much ready to break out. But after taking a look at 1979, we know for sure that the movements that we are having are still really minuscule compared to 1979. And even this move in here that brought the market up uh, around 2006. Okay, thank you for tuning in and have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.